What I'd like to do, peeking over here, is tell you a little bit about this automata. Now this one's called the Silly Explorer, and there's a little butterfly, little brass one down here. I'll show you that in a moment. And what we've got is the explorer looking with his butterfly net to catch the butterfly and doesn't realise he's in the crocodile's mouth. So what happens is, as he's looking there, trying to catch the butterfly, which is bobbing up and down, the crocodile's going to chomp down on him, his legs are going to thrash about, chomp up and down on the silly explorer, and the whole thing will start again. So let's uh, turn the handle, and you can see now his legs are thrashing up and down, and we open up, and we start the whole performance again. So just run through that. See his legs being chomped and up he springs. So what we've got are lots of mechanisms here. We've got gears, cams, uh, and some cranks all doing their thing as well. So what we'll do is just run through the mechanisms here, show you what each one does, um, and it'll make sort of sense of everything we've got here. Now the first and foremost is this big cog here. What we're doing, this is my time machine. This cog gives us the whole performance of the explorer falling down into the crocodile's mouth for the legs to thrash, for the mouth to chomp up and down and do other various bits and pieces. They're all going to be controlled by other mechanisms here but what we don't want to do is turn the handle once and the whole thing's over at lightning speed. So what we've got is a gear ratio here so that we've stepped it down so we have to turn the handle in order to make the whole mechanisms work. So that's our first mechanism. That's the, that's the king one here, because it controls everything else that comes on here. So the master mechanism really is how I like to think about it. Now the next one you can see just here, and incidentally all the black on here is, this is pencil, that helps lubricate the wood and keep things moving nicely. Now this one here is a cam, and this cam we've got as you can see, various shapes. This controls the opening and closing of the crocodile's mouth. So as I turn this one around, it pushes down on this bar that you can see that's coming up from the front there. If I just turn that round. So you can see that pushes down, that's the master cam. That's, that this is in the chomping mode at the moment, and that's giving us a few chomps onto the Explorer. Then it stops and his legs are thrashing, so we've got other mechanisms now working, so that's pausing. And now we're coming back to, after the legs have done all their thrashing, this starts to go down, and as it pulls up, we're opening up the mouth of the crocodile. That's gonna reset everything back to normal. The man's gonna spring up, and this just pauses for a few seconds while we wait for the whole performance to start again. And then now you can see what's going to happen here. If we just push a bit further forward, it's going to drop. And that will be the crocodile's mouth dropping, boom, at that point. So that's that mechanism there. So as we come along, what we've also got is another little mechanism sitting along here. And on this one, we've got a gear wheel and a cam, and that's going to a push rod. And that's actually, at this stage, a redundant mechanism. I've got something at the side which um, would have just been moving another butterfly. So as we go round, that's just taking off from the main mechanism. And that's just pushing around. And that's creating a cam to go round. So as it goes round, you can see that that cam, which I'm moving by hand now, will just go up and down. I said, now, there was another butterfly out there. That was another mechanism I was building in. But the next one we have along, we can see another cam here and a follower. And that, that one's pushing our explorer up and down, but also the butterfly on the top as well. So that's giving us a double movement. So that one will just use gravity and that the weight of, the, of his body pushes that down. And we come up, we've got the crocodile chomping. You can see the cam follower going round. That's making the explorer thrash about inside the crocodile's mouth. Now with the mechanisms we've got back here really for making the explorer's legs thrash about. And here shows you when things you're designing, a slight design change because I've got two 
cams on the square here offset that were supposed to be at 90 degrees to each other, making the, the explorer's legs thrash up and down. Um, but what I have got is also a cam here, and this is also creating the thrashing movement on one leg, but only one of these is now being used to create the thrashing on his leg. So we can see a one cam follower and then the other one on the top, although I've got two there. Um, because this is kind of like a prototype, in the end I decided what I would do is go back and use that mechanism. Because this one's quite big, but I've actually got a really tiny one, it's all compacted into a small mechanism. Um, which we'll show you a video of that. Unfortunately, the actual model itself is no longer with us. It crashed off a bookcase and fell to the floor. Um, but you can see with the development that in this one, I was working out future use of the mechanisms there. And I said that was just working on pulling the, uh, the legs up and down to make the explorer's legs push up and down. And last one, at least, if you can just see down here, this mechanism final one as we go along here and you'll notice there's just what I call a bracing rod behind it that was just to keep everything nice and firm on this one this controls actually pulling the the explorer back at the end when the whole performance starts again so as it goes round he's being chomped and it's a bit like the crocodile's mouth it's called a mirroring that as the mouth opens we want that to go first and then the explorer to spring back up and start our mechanism again. While this is happening, on these little movements, that butterfly's bouncing up and down as well. So that one works in conjunction with the crocodile's mouth. It's all about timing. So all these mechanisms work like that. Now I've got little strings, nylon strings, um, pulling down on the, on the mechanisms. I'll turn this around. You can see now that the, the threads We've got a cam follower, which is the, the brass bar, and that thread is now pulling the nylon thread, it's actually fishing cord. That, in this particular instance, that one's pulling up the crocodile's mouth. <laughs> Hear it creaking away there. That's getting ready to go to the top. Our explorer will pop up, and now you can see it's being held under tension. As this drops, it will go floppy, that arm swings up and the head will crash down like so. So all these mechanisms are work, designed to work in the movement and timed to work together. That's the thing with doing all the gears and the cogs and everything on here and the cranks and the cams is all about timing. And the gears wheel gives us the opportunity to allow that gear all to happen so that we've got this a wonderful sense of timing going on. Otherwise, the whole performance would happen too quickly. And that, in essence, is the Ciliary Explorer.